Lately, I have seen quite a bit of confusion regarding the playable characters in Star Rail and the paths that they follow. Some characters seem to follow a completely different path than the ones shown in game. So I think it would be fun to go over everyone to give them a proper place in the story, as well as in the game itself. With that being said, let's start with the Astral Express crew. Obviously, everyone follows the path of the Trailblaze. However, not everyone started out on this path. For example, before joining the Astral Express, Dun Hung used to follow the Hunt. And March's past probably had something to do with their remembrance. Welt even comes from an entire different universe. But ever since they decided to join the Astral Express, they left their old paths behind and started anew on the path of the Trailblaze. On our first destination, we arrived at the space station, which had a couple of connections worth noting, especially the Genius Society. Every member of the Genius Society follows Nus the Erudition, so both Herta and Ron May follow the path of Erudition. Just as Dr. Ratio, since the entire Intelligentsia guild also worships Nus. Asta and Arlen don't really have a path they follow, but Asta has very strong ties to the IPC because of her family, and also assists Herta with her research, so she kind of supports both the Preservation and the Erudition factions. Speaking of the IPC, Topaz and Aventurine both have major roles within the IPC, so they also follow the Preservation by extension. Moving on to Cherilo 6, the people from the Overworld follow the Preservation as well, especially Bronya, who as a Guardian would even have inherited the power of the Preservation if the Trailblazer didn't took on the will of the Guardians for themselves. Jabart, Serval and Lynx are very loyal to the bloodline of Guardians as part of the Landau family, and even if they don't receive any power from the Preservation, they definitely serve the Preservation with all their might. And of course, the same goes for Pela, as she is part of the Silvermane Guards. As for the Underworlders, the Wildfire crew isn't really affiliated with any path, as they simply fight for their own rights and freedom. Our great leader Pitch Dark Hook the Great and Clara also don't really follow a path. But Svarog used to serve the preservation as a personal assistant of a very important scientist of Bellabog. And then lastly, Sampo follows the path of Elation as one of the masked fools, just like Sparkle. Unlike Bellabog, the Shienzo Lofu has almost nothing to do with the preservation, and focuses almost all of their effort on the path of the hunt. Most importantly, Jing Yuan directly receives a large portion of his power from Lan himself, as an emanator of the hunt. His direct underlings also follow the hunt very strictly, such as Yang Qing and Yu Kong. Fu Xuan even wants to become the next general of the Law Fu, so when she eventually succeeds Jing Yuan, she will become the next emanator as well. As part of the Cloud Knights, Su Shang also follows the hunt, just like how Dan Hung used to in the past. Hanya, Zhui Yi, and Hua Hua also follow the path of the hunt, and actively take part in the extermination of the Mara Struck and other threats to the Xianzhou as part of the Ten Lords Commission. Then there are a few strange edge cases that are kinda different from the normal Xianzhou natives, such as Bailu. The Vidyadara mostly follow the hunt, but at the same time they also seek to follow the path of permanence, so she does a little bit of both. And Luo Cha is also very weird, because he is an abomination of the abundance, but he still wants to destroy the abundance according to himself. So I honestly don't think I should count him as a follower of the hunt or abundance for now. Which is also the reason why Jing Liu is not counted along the other people of the Xianzhou. We just don't know yet what path they follow, or what their motivations actually are. Just like Jing Liu, Blade also used to follow the hunt in the past as well. But he has long since joined the Stellaron Hunters. The Hunters are also kind of a mystery still. We only know that they follow Elio's plan. But since we don't know if Elio follows an Aeon, the Stellaron Hunters are just a little bit of an enigma. As a side note, I think that Ching Chue's laziness is so extreme that she can't even be considered to be a follower of the hunt anymore. Unless you count playing Celestial Jade as something Lana approves of. Moving on to some of the newer characters we will encounter very soon. 
we have Misha and Gallagher, who both follow the path of harmony as part of the family. And Black Swan serves the remembrance as she is a memo keeper from the Garden of Recollection. Now, the only characters that we have left are kind of strange. First off, we have everyone from the Everflame Mansion. They follow the path of destruction, but since Nanook doesn't acknowledge the way they go about doing so, they just blindly worship the destruction without knowing what it means. And then there is Akron, who claims to be a Galaxy Ranger. If that is true, she also follows the path of the hunt. But since it's been a long time since anybody even heard of the Galaxy Rangers, I have my suspicions. Argenti simply follows the path of beauty, but since he is gaining powers from an unknown source, it's kind of vague if the beauty is still the path he thinks it is. And lastly we have Tingyun, who is actually Fantilia so she just follows the path of destruction. But the Tingyun from the past, who was just a regular citizen, would be a follower of the hunt as well, since all of her businesses were all focused on the betterment of the Shienzo. And that was every character we have up until now. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Bye.